one of my favorite experts later. Of course, this all ahead of tonight's State of the Union address where President Trump is expected in just three hours to call for bipartisanship in pursuit of immigration and infrastructure deals, all while touting a very strong economy and, of course, those tax cuts. Millions of Americans, by the way, feeling the benefits of the new GOP tax law. And my first two guests are seeing an immediate firsthand impact. Oklahoma Senator James Langford joins me now with his guest for tonight, Ed Lynn, Buffalo Wild Wings restaurant, a franchise owner who says that his business is benefiting from tax reform and, of course, consumer optimism. First to you, Senator, a lot of excitement, a lot of anticipation over not just what President Trump will say tonight, but his tone and how he delivers that message. Yeah, it's always interesting when uh, the conversation is about tone rather than content, but it, it, it truly is with this president. But I think the content is going to be solid. This, this Capitol Hill is literally an anthill right now of security and of people and of folks setting up, getting ready for the evening. But I, I would fully expect he's going to come, as you mentioned, talk about infrastructure, talk about immigration, talk about trade and what the future is for trade and uh, where we're going. I'm confident he'll talk about the tax policies and uh, what's already happening across the, uh, America and the low unemployment rate and the number of jobs that have been created. It's, it's it's a very positive time for us. And of course, Senator, uh, we should remind the audience there were two times when President Trump had a chance to speak to the American public that actually were amazing and the market reacted positively. The night he won, when Dow futures were down 800 points, he was gracious in his acceptance. And then on February 28th to a joint session of Congress, it wasn't a state of the union, but it felt like one. And he really rose to that occasion. He did. And uh, everyone that night as well talked about tone that he walked in and it wasn't like it was a tweet. And it was like he was presidential and was laying out a vision for the country. I would expect he would do that again tonight. Ed, uh, one of the first things we saw immediately after the election in November was a spike in consumer optimism. On Wall Street, they call that soft data. A guy like you who operates many restaurants, you see the hard data. Have you seen an actual manifestation of this newfound optimism in America? It, it is a, it's an overwhelming sense I've got back in Oklahoma City. We, we are... Uh, um, very excited. Uh, the the uh, consumer confidence is really high, uh, and 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 as a restaurant is in the restaurant industry, we depend upon discretionary spending, and so more people, more money in people's paychecks is going to hopefully result in higher sales at our restaurant. Yeah, I know. Particularly in the last couple of years, it was so cheap to eat at home uh, that it put a lot of pressure on folks like you. I think another thing, obviously, too, this tax bill, uh, three million Americans getting bonuses, many, many more now starting to see it in their paycheck. Uh, are you seeing now that, that discretionary income that you've talked about starting to come into your restaurant? We, we've seen an up increase in sales in our restaurants in Oklahoma City at the end of the fourth quarter and then year to date this year in January. We've seen up, we're up anywhere from two to 10% at our restaurants in sales. And I read where you had raised six children. Uh, you must, as a business owner now, be pretty thrilled that the estate tax has been adjusted so now maybe you can focus on building more restaurants or franchising more and creating more opportunities now. I, I trust that my kids won't have to deal with that issue for a number of years, but yes, uh, that, that would benefit our family greatly. Thank you. Senator, uh, after this, is, uh, after this, uh, this presentation to the American public, they, you will have to get down to the uh, sort of nitty gritty of actually putting together an infrastructure deal, actually cobbling together some sort of compromise with immigration, the wall, and DACA. Do you feel like the mo I know the moment is here. I think for the American public, the moment is here because both sides have things they want desperately. Can it be done? Will it be done? It can be done on immigration immediately. Uh, this is something I've, I have four or five bipartisan meetings on immigration every day now, uh, walking through this. Multiple phone calls, multiple proposals. Uh, the pressure is finally on enough that people are actually sitting down at the table negotiating. It's been my frustration with immigration for a long time. There's been no deadline. And what the president gave us now almost six months ago was a deadline to say this has to be done by the first week of March. And for the first time in two decades now, the Congress is sitting down seriously, both sides, House and Senate, actually negotiating and saying how we're going to get to some resolution on some of the areas of immigration. Obviously, there's a lot of areas we're not going to touch. Uh, but we've got to deal with border security. We've got to deal with family migration issue. We have to be able to deal with, obviously, the DACA and what that means on a legal right. uh, basis. Uh, so I, I think it's going to get done. Now, the infrastructure is right after that. We're looking forward to the president's proposal tonight and see what he lays out there. Thank you so much, Senator Lankford. And, of course, Ed and Lynn, uh, congratulations. Appreciate you both being on this morning, this afternoon. Thank rather. you. Yeah, I want to bring you. in our panel now for more analysis on